I think I will just open without my video on, if that's okay. So everybody, can you hear me? Can you hear my voice? Oh, all right. Thanks, Cole. Yeah, yes. I can hear you. <laughs> no, I can uh, show my video. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming back to our webinar. This is the spatial series. Actually, this webinar uh, has been on for like seven days. This is the eighth day of the webinar. However, uh, today I think this is very special because we have Joe Dale coming back to our webinar again. And I believe there are some uh, attendees coming from other countries than Indonesia. I saw there are some of you coming from UK and other countries probably. So welcome everybody. I'm here from Jakarta, Indonesia, and most of the attendees are teachers from Indonesia. Um, today, uh, we are going to have call, uh, sorry, Joe Dale talking about having a play, simple interactive synchronous activities for remote teaching. But uh, for you to know, uh, we are going to have this session for about 90 minutes, so we will end around 5.30 uh, Indonesia time. Um, okay, I think uh, all, you, uh, all of you know that we are going to record the session and later on the session will be posted in um, our YouTube account. And I think that's all. That's my opening. I'm going to hand over this to Calm. Probably you want to say something and greet the participant, Calm. The microphone is yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Vanita. Uh, welcome to our webinar uh, in collaboration with ITEL. Uh, I'm delighted that you've all joined us this afternoon here in Jakarta and about 10 o'clock in the morning for those of you in the UK. Um, I've, we've been watching people register for this webinar and we think it's tremendously exciting that there is such a, a large number of English language professionals together today from across Indonesia uh, and across the UK. So we're going to be finding out a little bit more about who's with us in this session. Um, yeah, basically, I don't want to take up any more time. I just wanted to say on behalf of the British Council, uh, I wanted to thank uh, ITEL for this great initiative in supporting language teachers in Indonesia during this crisis whilst people are at home and we're having to learn new uh, ways of, of delivering a, or continuing education and, and teaching uh, our students um, at home. And special, special thank you to our UK expert, Joe Dale, for his <laughs> time today and in sharing his expertise with us. So that's it from me and I'll hand over to Joe to take over. Lovely. Thank you ever so much for that lovely introduction there, Colm, and also to you, Fanita, for uh, welcoming everyone to the session. Uh, it's really amazing to be here. Um, we've, ca we've had um, hundreds of people register, so it'll be very interesting to see how many people uh, uh, watch the session live. There's over 400 people who are watching it live right now, so hopefully we'll have um, hundreds more joining us. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, what I would suggest... Um, that we do during the session is that you uh, use the chat as a way of um, writing down reflections, asking questions. There's also the Q&A option as well um, that you've all got. I can see someone's asked a question already. But in the chat at the bottom of the page, you'll see it says all panelists and attendees. Now, I can see from the chat that some of you have got that selected to all panelists, which is turned on by default. So if you want to send a message to everybody, not just the panelists, which is obviously myself, Anita, Colm, Jati and Maria, then could you uh, click on the drop down menu and select all panelists and attendees. And then that means that your message will go to everyone in the group. That'd be really handy. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me OK, um, which is great. I presume that you all can. Yep. Uh, so the idea of this session essentially is I'm going to be showing you different ways of including interactive elements, activities, games and what have you within your um, live lessons. So the idea is these are these are activities that you would be doing live. There are some of the activities you could do asynchronously as well. In other words, as homework or as assignments. But essentially, we're going to have hopefully lots of fun having a bit of a play. 
uh, which is why I put the word play in the title with different act, uh, interactive activities. Now, uh, I very much appreciate there might be some people who are watching right now who know a lot of these activities already. If you do know them already, could you maybe share some of your experiences of using them in the chat to help other colleagues? If they're new to you, then um, there'll be a lot to learn. <laughs> but at the same time, as you know, the session is being recorded and it will be made available for you to watch later. So you can then watch as many times as you need to. For some of the tools, I will literally go through step by step on how to create them. For other ones, I will just um, show you how they work as it were. But I would really encourage you to uh, have a look on YouTube for any of the tools I'll be mentioning and just do a search for the name of that tool and there will be an up-to-date tutorial on how to do this. But um, I'm more than happy for you to contact me as well after today. You can see that my contact details are on that slide. So um, you can see that my Twitter handle is at Joe Dell. It's been lovely that I've had um, quite a few Indonesian English language teachers follow me in the last couple of weeks. My email address is there as well, joedell at talk21.com. So I, for those people who haven't seen me before, if I give you a little bit of background before I start. So I was a, a French teacher for 13 years, uh, teaching at secondary school level for three years um, at the start of my career. And then I taught um, at a middle school on the Isle of Wight, which is where I am. And it's in a lovely, lovely sunny day here at seven minutes past 10 in the morning. Um, and uh, I taught there for 10 years uh, in a middle school, nine to 13 year olds. And for the last 10 years, I've been an independent languages consultant. And um, normally I go around the world running training, but at the moment I'm doing everything remotely, which is uh, the, the way that it is. Okay. So I hope you find it useful. I would really encourage you to leave comments in the chat. And if you have any questions, feel free to put those um, in the Q&A section as well. If you want to ask a question in the chat, could you put a Q, the, the letter Q at the beginning to make it clear it's a question? That's just helpful for um, our um, panelists to pick up which questions have been asked. And we'll have some time at the end for you to be able to um, uh, for me to uh, me be able to answer as many questions as possible. I can see that a few of you are saying that you can't see me. I'm not sure what that is uh, or that you can't hear me. If you can't hear me, make sure that your volume is turned up. Um, and okay, so some, uh, someone has advised you can exit full screen to see Joe. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to make a start. Um, and I very much hope that you enjoy this. I'm just going to minimize my there we are, my thumbnail, and uh, away we go. So I'm going to minimize the chat as well. If a chat message comes up, then um, I will no I'll see that it's be the message has come up, but I won't be stopping every two seconds to check the chat. Um, but if there's a burning question, I'm more than happy to answer it as need be. So let's make a start. Okay, lovely. So the first thing we're going to do, as we have so many people in the room, we're going to do a quick Mentimeter. So I'm going to go here and we're going to find out where you are all from. So I'm going to click present and as you can see on the screen it says go to menti.com and use the code 36456. So can you please on your device can you go to menti.com and put in that code and then uh, what will happen in a moment is it will generate a word cloud. When we did this um, in the last uh, webinar um, I asked you, how are you feeling about remote teaching? And we had hundreds and hundreds of um, messages appearing. It was absolutely incredible. Um, can you put, obviously you can write Indonesia, that's fine, but could you also write, um, for example, your province or if, if you're from the UK, if you write, you know, your, your town or your county to so have a bit more information, you can see that uh, the reason that Indonesia is the largest uh, for everybody at the moment it's because of the fact that that is being put in more than other other terms and so with Mentimeter if you haven't seen it before it, the way that it works is the more high frequency the word that is being put in or the terms that are being put in will appear largest on the screen and always in the middle so at the moment I can see that over 150 people have uh, put in their answers so I'm just going to wait a moment for you to add in your answers so we can see we have lots of people, mostly from Indonesia, but we also have some other people. We have people from Germany, from Ireland, from West Java, from a place I've never heard of before, from Hillingdon, from planet Earth. <laughs> That's good to know. From, um, where else? It's, it's moving too quickly. Right, from West London, from uh, South of Jakarta, Indonesia, 
Uh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, mostly from Indonesia, but this is lovely. Apparently, over 200 people registered from the UK yesterday when I posted all over Facebook about this, which is great. Sydney, Australia, Cheltenham. This is amazing. Fantastic. I'm just going to check the chat while that's um, appearing, but please keep going with um, with all your messages. That's amazing. Fantastic. Pakistan. Excellent. 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 Okay. We'll just wait a few more seconds. I just, it's really interesting to see where you're all from. So how do I get to... All right. So you go to menti.com by opening up a new tab in your browser, Sue, and then just writing down menti.com and then putting in the code. So there's two sites that you use in relation to Mentimeter. Mentimeter, to create your presentation, you go to mentimeter.com and you sign up and you you create your presentation there. I'm not going to be showing you how to do that because that would take too much time. But if you go onto YouTube and do a search for Mentimeter, you'll find out exactly how to do it. But from a delegate point of view or a student point of view, all you have to do is go to menti.com, as it says on the screen, and put in the code. And, and Mentimeter is a really, really useful tool to use in a live session because it gives the, you the opportunity of asking questions to check understanding, check comprehension, make sure everyone is up at the same point with you. Um, which is really, really handy, particularly if you have an audio only session, you don't have the students with their webcams on, you can check understanding um, by being able to use this sort of tool, which is just great. So I see we've got a question. What is okay, so the question is, what is your first step to become a remote teacher while almost the students do not understand all the vocabularies that the teacher as instructed yeah that's that's tricky so what i would suggest is that you use visuals to um underpin what you're saying and you obviously you know your students don't you you know uh, what they can do what they can't do based on prior attainment and um the uh, testing that you've done with them so all i would say is um if you're going to do a live a live session just think carefully when you're planning the content you're going to be doing and and constantly ask questions around comprehension do as everyone understood what we're doing and just keep it simple that's what i would say you just have to do your best you know no one's expecting people to become expert remote teachers in in no time at all you just have to try your best and, and go from there now look at look at the amazing uh, word cloud look at that look at it isn't that just an absolutely wonderful thing so there's now 400 430 answers so far if i give it another couple of seconds then we'll move on to the next question but this is um this is a thing of beauty. It's absolutely lovely. And again, Indonesia is the largest, followed by Malang, Jakarta, West Java. That's great. That's really great. But we've got a few people from the UK as well, which is nice to see, as well as further afield. Saudi Arabia as well we've got. That's lovely. Okay. Okay, so I can see that uh, Andre has asked the question, what are the other benefits of using menti.com? This is new for me. Well, um, whenever I've shown Mentimeter, uh, in different sessions, I found uh, that it always gets a good response. What I love about it is the way that um, you can interact dynamically, as I'm doing right now with a word cloud. You've got different exercise types. You've got word cloud, you've got uh, multiple choice, you've got um, open-ended answers. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. So if you're looking for anonymous polling, I think it's really good. It's also good for retrieval practice. So as at the start, at the start of a lesson, you could, for example, say, right, post everything about what we did last lesson or last week or last month. So if you're doing, you know, it could be something like if you'll be doing the topic of sport and leisure, post all the verbs and all the activities you can think around the area of sport and leisure. You can then take a screenshot of that or you can export the uh, answers as, a, um, as an image uh, for evidence later or for bringing up in a in a presentation the next lesson to remind students of what we've been uh, what you've been doing with them so and you could use it likewise at the end of a lesson as a as a plenary to show that people understood there's a really nice one which is called speech bubbles which gives you little tiles and you could use that well in a real in a classroom situation as exit tickets in other words the student has to then reply to your question and then he's he or she is allowed to leave the classroom you can maybe say right once you've answered the exit ticket you can then turn off your video or leave the room. With an exit ticket, you would have to say who it is who's left the message. You'd have to, the, t the student would have to write that in. But, um, but there we are. And for free, you can have up to three slides for free as well. When you come to the, adding this third slide, 
when you're creating your presentation, which we're not going to do today, um, you have to put an email, an email address of a friend. But I know through experience, if you just put in, for example, Mickey at MickeyMouse.com, in other words, you make it up, then it will still work. So for free, you can have unlimited presentations and you can have up to three slides per presentation, which I think is very, uh, is very generous. So I'm just waiting for my mouse to come back into That's what's happening. There we are. Right. Okay. So I, I can see there's been a few other questions, but uh, I'm going to carry on now if that's okay. So thank you ever so much, all 486 of you who've uh, posted um, responses. So that's given us a, a good idea of where everyone is. So let's go to the next question. Uh, so this one is a similar one, but we just want to work out how many people are from Indonesia, how many people from the UK, and how many people are from other places, for example, uh, Saudi Arabia or Australia or what have you. So just, it will give us a nice indication. I love the way that it's changing real time. Um, on your screen, don't forget you need to move on to the next section. Um, Russia, excellent. Feel free to write in the chat as well to tell us where the other is, where you're from. Uruguay, wow. <laughs> Awesome. I'm just going to scroll through to see if there's any other questions I can answer while you're waiting. So, um, yeah, that's lovely. Joe, somebody asked about whether Menti can be used in synchronous or asynchronously. Maybe you can. Um, I, yeah, I, I absolutely. Um, to me, it's got to be used synchronously. Um, I, I've never tried to use it asynchronously, but I always do it in live presentations. So you could have a play with it to try and use it um, asynchronously, but I think I'm right in saying it has to be used, async, uh, used, uh, used synchronously, which is why I think in a live webinar situation, it works particularly well for asking questions and comprehension and, and things I've talked about already. But I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's correct. Uh, right, I think those are all the questions I can see so far. So we've got a few more, a few more potential answers coming through. Let's... Uh, you have another yeah, question, so, Q&A? Yep, yep no you, problem. If you use smartphones, is it possible to do interactive activity like Menti here? Absolutely, yeah. So the great thing about Mentimeter is it works on all devices. All you need is an internet connection. There is actually um, a, uh, 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 an Android and iOS app, which you don't have to use, but you can download onto a phone. It also works on an iPad as well if you use the iPhone uh, Mentimeter app. But that's really just... Um, for the students or the attendees to participate in the Mentimeter presentation. You don't have to use the app. You can just use the web page as a student, but it just makes it a bit um, possibly easier because the students know that all they have to do is launch the Mentimeter app, get the code, and away you go. Um, okay, so, so can you show us where we can see the participants address on the Menti? I don't know what you mean by the word address in this context. I'm not asking people to give their personal address on the screen. I'm just asking them to say what country they're from. But um, yeah, okay. I think we'll carry on if that's okay. So that's given us a good indication uh, that most people are from the Indonesia, which is what we expected. And there's actually more people from uh, other countries than the UK. But you're all very, very welcome. So this is uh, absolutely fabulous. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to share the, 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 well, you have to get people to register, but we're here for an hour and a half. So if they want to join, that's fine. But please don't share the Zoom link anywhere publicly, but just ask them to register. That's absolutely fine. Okay, right. We're going to carry on then, if that's okay. So that's Minty Meter. Hopefully I've answered all the, the questions. For any sort of like how-to guides or for tutorials, I would recommend. In fact, having said that, I will just quickly show you how you, we can um, export the results. I'm just going to click on Home here and you can see here's my uh the back end as it were so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to once my mouse controls itself i'm going to um move the chat out of the way hang on there we are right so uh you can see it says uh, export results so i click on export results like this uh you'll see that there's a pdf now uh, which will load in a second and I, there we are. I can now click on that or I can click on individual pictures. So I wanted, for example, a, uh, the, a high resolution picture of that first fabulous word cloud. I've just clicked on that now. So what should happen in a moment is there we are. Can you see? So that's the word cloud, a picture 
of um, what to all the answers that you gave in, which is absolutely fabulous. So in other words, if you want evidence of the work that the students have been doing, then that's a really nice way of doing that. You could also use that for a future presentation. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, so there, there are lots of ideas around asynchronous communication that we could talk about, but the idea of this presentation is looking at synchronous ideas. Um, otherwise, I would, you know, in the presentation I did um, in the, la the last time, there were lots of asynchronous ideas, for example, screencasting, what have you. But the idea of this presentation is to look at synchronous ideas. I hope that's okay. Right, lovely. Right, so let's go back to my presentation. So thank you ever so much for everybody who has um, filled uh, some information. Yeah, so a Google form is, is sort of similar to this. I can just see from the questions coming up, but with a Google form, um, unless you show students the Google sheet that it generates, um, they're not all gonna see all the answers. A Google form is more for sort of individual response, whereas Mentimeter, the beauty of it is everyone sees what everyone else has written. So, um, there we are. Yeah, so you can have up to three slides for free, but you have to put in an, e an email address and all you have to do is just make up the email address or put in a real email address and it will work. So I've done this many times using mickey at mickeymouse.com and it's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, you can use Mentimeter for open-ended questions, absolutely. So for example, the, uh, uh, the, um, the speech bubbles one, which is the open end, there is literally an inter a, a, a exercise type called open-ended you just choose that one and you choose the um, speech bubbles one and then they all appear like little tweets or little messages which is lovely okay we're going to carry on then if that's all right to the next tool but hopefully that's given you a good idea on how Mentimeter works if there is time at the end after q and I'm more than happy to go through and how to create a presentation but I want to just give you a good overview of all the things because there will be some people who know Mentimeter very well um, so we're going to carry on now if that's okay Thanks ever so much. Right. So, ah, right. Now I'm hoping Wakelet is new to a lot of you. I think Wakelet is, is a really, really nice tool to, uh, to create um, a, what is called, referred to as a collection or a wake. And so when you're coming across all these interesting links, I, show, I, I shared a, a huge, great document uh, last time, uh, which was which is available here. I will give it to you right now again, is.gd forward slash tilt Thursday or Thurs, like that, there we are. Um, that's a, a, a 32 page, I think it is now, document of lots of lots of links around remote teaching, particularly aimed at language teachers. So that's perfect for the audience that we have today. Um, but then what do you do when you come across interesting links? Where do you store them? Now, I would really recommend using Wakelet. There are other tools such as Flipboard or Pinterest, which have similar services, but Wakelet is very, very nice and it's very simple to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly, uh, let's just get rid of that. I'm going to click on this link here and that's taking me to Wakelet. Okay. Uh, yeah, Padlet also, yeah, there's, there's lots of tools out there which have a similar functionality. Padlet is really good for publishing multimedia onto an uh, online notice board. And I love the way in which you can um, use it for recording audio. So it's really nice for speaking as well. I'm just going to log into Wakelet right now. I don't think it's going to show my password, which is good. Uh, it must be eight characters. Let's go. There we are. Always remember your password particularly when you're in a live session with uh, hundreds of people watching live. Right, okay. So as you can see, yeah, that's true, Roxana. Padlet now, you used to be able to have unlimited Padlets, but now you can have um, three Padlets for new account holders. But if you have, if you have existing Padlets, then uh, you don't lose those. You just um, can only have three new ones. Um, is Wakelet similar to Google Drive? You Well, you can't upload files like audio files or video files, what have you, but you can add links. I'll show you in a moment. Um, let's just go for it. Let's just go, right. So I'm going to click, as you can see here, it says create a new collection. Okay. So if I click here. Uh, let's come up with a title. So enter a title of your collection. So British, oh, make sure I spelled British correctly. British Council Online workshop right at the top it says add cover image yes it's completely free completely free right add cover cover image i could upload an image but i'm going to click choose from library 
it is a little bit like a blog. I'm going to show you in a minute how you how you can actually make a collaborative weight clip. Let's go for a picture. I don't know which one. Should we go for uh, this one, that one? Okay, right. That's my cover image. Right. So um, underneath, you can see you've got that green circle with a white cross on it. So I need to add something to that. Um, that link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back to my presentation and I'm going to just come out of my presentation quickly and go down to the last slide, which is here, or the penultimate slide, should I say. And I'm going to click there and click copy and then go back to Wakelet. And here, can you see it says paste URL? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, paste that URL into my wakelet and there it is. Now that's the short form of the URL, which is okay, but actually I think what would be better would be if I were to put that in the chat, sorry, in, in my browser even, and then I click on that and that's now the, the actual link, which is going to look better on the screen, I think. So let me go back to here. And now I'm going to edit that. I'm just going to delete it and start again. I'm going to delete that. There we are. And I'm going to do that again. So now I'm going to paste in the URL like that. And as you can see, there we are. That's what I wanted. That's much nicer, isn't it? So as you can see, um, we've now got that link is now there, which is perfect. So in other words, any link you come across, you can just post it in the chat, sorry, in the in the wakelet, and it will appear. I can see a few questions are coming up. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, so Padlet is similar to, Padlet and Wakelet are, there are similarities, but Wakelet is completely free. But you can't, for example, record audio in Wakelet. You can record video using Flipgrid. Uh, you saw when I clicked here, uh, one of the options is Flipgrid video. That's only, that's only available in the browser-based version. You can't do that on the app. But you can also upload things from Google Drive. Um, I've never tried uploading an audio file, which I've got in Google Drive. But you can add an image. You can add a YouTube clip. You can add a tweet. But for just making collections of links, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's just see if there's any other burning questions. Um, let's have a look. Jamboard is, is different in the sense that you're drawing collaboratively, so it's not really the same. Um, I would just do a search for Wakelet versus Padlet. There'll be lots of, I'm sure, uh, blog posts all about the difference. But I'm a big fan of this, particularly in the current situation where people are sharing links all the time about remote teaching, most of which I put in my, uh, my Google Doc. So that's essentially it. Um, but now to make it even more powerful, I'm going to click uh, Done. And you can see that top left, it says Contributors. I'm just, I can see a couple of people haven't understood exactly what, what I've, let's have a look. Let's, there was a comment there. Let me just find it. Uh, no, someone just posted that they don't understand, so I can't see where that is right now. So I do apologize, but essentially, Pad, uh, sorry, Wakelet, what it is, it's a, it's a free tool which allows you to collect links all together in the same place. You can make multiple collections which are themed according to the things that you're interested in. Um, it's not like Google Classroom. It's okay. Let's let's just carry on. Otherwise, I'm just going to be. Yeah, it's different. Check it out. And what I'm showing it, I'm showing it to you right now. Have a look at it, and then you can work out yourselves how similar it is. To, so some of the functionalities will be similar to some of the tools you're mentioning, but um, it's different as well. Okay. So here, this is the exciting bit. Can you see here? It says contributors. If I click on contributors. Can you see that there's a code there? Now, if I click copy code and I put this code into the chat right now, what I would like you to do, please, is I would like you to go to uh, wakelet.com. Uh, I'm just going to log out here right now and show you how it works, uh, which is here and let's log out. Right, I'm just going to log out of wakelet. Now, in wakelet.com, if you go to here, and can you see it says enter code? Yeah, enter code. So if you click enter code and you paste in the code like that, so you can all do this now, or as many as, you, as um, would like to, you enter in the code 
you click join and then you put your name. So I'm just going to write Joe and you click add. And now you'll see that you have access to this. So if you click edit collection like that, you can all now add a link. So what I'd like you to do, please, is I'd like you to add a link that anything that you found which has been useful around remote teaching. Okay, so don't please don't just put random things there. I put the code already in the chat. I'll just give you the code again, which is there. So it's seven F nine three six A B. If you could all have a go at posting something into the Wakelet, we can just see how powerful it can be in uh, in adding. Uh, a building up a collection in no time at all. So what I'm suggesting is you could, for example, if you were using, let's say, Zoom, you could create a breakout room for different groups within your session. So say four students per breakout room, if you're, if you're teaching, say, a class of 30. Um, and then you could give them the code, an individual code for each wakelet that you create. So you could, for example, create four, five, six wakelets give them the code, make one person um, uh, like the spokesperson to manage it all, and then get them to then, based on some collaborative work that you're doing with them, get them all to add content into the, into the Wakelet. So I'll just refresh the page, see if anyone's added anything. But uh, it'd be lovely to see. There we are. Thank you. So as we can see here, someone's added something about Edpuzzle, Quizlet, uh, goose chase, yeah, that's a cool one. I don't know how how that would work. A virtual goose chase, maybe you could do that. I suppose actually, I think in fact, if you do a search for virtual goose chase or or scavenger hunt, you'll you'll find examples of that. Flipgrid, look look how quickly people are adding content. This is great. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute or two, and I'll see if I can answer any more questions that have come up. Um, so we had the question: Is this like Google Classroom? Well. There's elements, I suppose, that are like Google Classroom, but why not make a Wakelet and then add it into the Google Classroom and then ask people to add to it, you know, give them give the students a code in Google Classroom and then give them the assignment of um, what you want them to do and then get them to talk to each other via a breakout room in Zoom, for example. Let's carry on. See if there's any other questions. Okay, so Rindu, for the code, you just go to wakelet.com top right it says enter code you click on that link you do not have to have an account to do that you paste in the code and then away you go so this is and, and you saw that i made my wakelet private so nobody will have access to this apart from those people that have got the code uh, i suppose if someone were to post something inappropriate you'd have to just i'm not sure if you can change the code for, uh if they do that i'd have to find that out or you'd have to i suppose just um make a cop you can make a copy of the collection and then just start again that's probably what you'd have to do actually um, but I think this is very cool. Okay, let's see. Let's refresh the page to see how many other people have um, added to our wake. Okay, okay. Some stuff around primary science. Uh, Play posit, which is similar to Ed Puzzle. Those people haven't seen that before. It used to be called Educanon. Uh, formative, yeah, formative. Um, is really nice. The uh, the feature I particularly like is making a PDF into an interactive resource. And for free, you used to be able to have 20 of those PDFs, interactive PDFs a month. But my understanding is they've lifted that um, uh, that limit to more, it might even be unlimited um, during lockdown or, or certainly for the next month or so. Um, there's links to that in my Google Doc. Look at this, lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So again, feel free to write in the chat any ways you could see how you could use this in your own classroom or virtual classroom. But I was suggesting that if you have, say, breakout rooms, um, which can be done in Zoom as well in other tools, there's some suggestions on how to do that in Microsoft Teams and how to do that in uh, Google Meet in that long document I've shared with you. Uh, you could give one Wakelet code to each small group and then you can all um, add to the collection. If you want to carry on doing this, uh, adding to this collection as well, I'm more than happy to just leave this wakelet open because um, it could be very useful, I think. And keep refreshing the page. It's the same, it doesn't change dynamically, but uh, keep you know refreshing the page and see how it changes. Yeah, poll everywhere, another good one. 
uh, Game Kit. I've not heard of that one before. I'll have to check that out. Scribble, Edlink, lots of fantastic uh, information that people are sharing here. Seneca, I know a lot of people are talking talk about Seneca. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, you don't need to log out first, I don't think, but, um, but there we are. Uh, it should work without needing to uh, do that, I think. Right, let's just see. Yeah, okay, I think we're going to carry on, if that's okay. Unless there's any other burning questions, I'll just wait for a moment if there's anything else that you want to know about uh, Wakelet. Uh, could you please post the link for the... Yeah, I'll do, I'm going to do that in a minute, Elizabeth. I'm just going to show how to do that. So unless there's any more questions, I'll, I'll do that right now, if that's okay. So if I click um, done like that and I log back in, because I think, to, well, yeah, can you see it, the share option is grayed out? That's probably because I'm not logged in. But if I log in now again, remembering that there are eight characters in my password, not seven. Like that, log in. There we are. Has that worked? That's interesting. Log in. What's it doing? Typical, isn't it? Right, let me just try again. It's not letting me log in. Why not? Maybe there were too many people trying to access it at the same time. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll try one more time. I know, I'll go to a new page. Let's see if that makes a difference. I'm sure it won't, but. You never know. That's the great thing about doing things live. You never know. <laughs> oh, there we are. I'm in now. Okay. Uh, right. Let's go here then. 51 items. So we don't what? 51 items in about five minutes. Right. So uh, it's saying, ah, yeah, right. This is important. Right. So you see here it says share. Now that's because it's private. So you can set it up as a private collection, which is absolutely what I would recommend in a school situation. But if I want to share it, if I click edit collection, can you see here top right, it says private. If I want to share it with everyone now, uh, I can make it unlisted or public. So I can make it unlisted. Then if I click done, now it says share, can you see? So if I click share, um, you can see I can share it directly to Google Classroom, which is really nice for creating an assignment automatically. I can share it straight to Microsoft Teams. I can tweet about it or I can just share the link right now. So if I just share the link right now, like that, you will be able to click on that. And again, you do not need to have an account. So just be very clear. If you want to use this with students, I would recommend keeping it private and telling them they don't give the code to anybody else. Um, if you want to share it either privately or publicly, you need to make it unlisted or public. If it's public, presumably it could be found in a Google search. Uh, not if it was unlisted. So if you wanted to post the, well, I think in a Google Class situation or similar, Microsoft Teams, I would simply say, this is the code for the Wakelet. Uh, uh, use it now to log it, to, to, to add the code so you can access the Wakelet. I wouldn't give them the link unless you wanted to share that with teacher friends um, based on resources that you found. Hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions before we move on to the next tool? But thanks ever so much for that. Uh, uh, those those contributions that was really cool okay no one else no one else wants to say is this like this is it like that <laughs> uh right so eric's asked how long can we access do you mean the wakelet i think i presume it's as long as it um has that um the, the unlisted rights so if i change that i mean i, I don't I, i'm more than happy to leave this permanently in my account um it's fine. I mean, obviously this is just a demo, but if people, I suppose if people want to carry on adding content to, uh, to it, I'm more than happy to leave it there. Um, yeah, that's fine. So it's as long as, it, as long as the person who creates it makes it available for. Um, the difference between the code and the link. So the link is when uh, it's either public or unlisted, so people can see it, but they can't contribute, it, contribute to it unless they have the code. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, can we set time or schedule event for Wakelet? I have no idea, but that's a good Twitter question to ask. Uh, so as I've said, it doesn't appear, it won't appear in a Google search engine if you make it unlisted, but it, it probably would if you make it um, public, similar to a YouTube clip as well. 
works in a similar similar ways. Uh, yes, yeah, so you use it to collect resources exactly. Yeah, I'm, we're going to carry on if that's okay. But thank you ever so much for all these questions. Just have a familiarise yourself with it, and you'll be uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Right, let's go back. Well, that went really well. I was really pleased with that. That's good. Right, the next activity is um, whiteboard.fi. This is a really really cool um, activity that you can do in no time at all. Um, it doesn't require any registration on behalf of either the teacher or the students, which is really cool. And the whiteboards that you create are all deleted automatically within two hours of you setting them up. Um, and you can close the, the session at any time, uh, at any point as well, while, you are, uh, uh, while you're, you're taking part in the session. So before I show you how this works, I want to just quickly uh, bring up a link, which, uh, hang on, let me just, I thought I had a link there, let me just check. I have got a link, it was, out. okay. So I'm just gonna quickly copy this link into a new tab. As you can see, I've got one or two tabs open, but I've got 16 gigs of RAM, so it's all good. Right, so um, to, just to make it a bit more focused on English language teaching, these are um, some resources I'm sure you've seen um, before, the Teaching English website that the British Council uh, leads and organizes. And there's um, a primary um, lesson plan here, all about my sea creature. So you can see if you scroll down, um, some of these materials are designed to be used face to face, and some of these materials are designed to be used online. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through an example of how you could use some of this content around sea creatures in an online situation. Uh, you don't need to see this link, right? Well, I could, I could, if you really want me to, I can share the link with you in the chat. It's not a problem. Let me just share it with you right now. So you can have a look at it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the one that says online lesson class materials. Okay. So I'm clicking on that and you'll see that they've used the same template that I've been using in my session right now. So this is a PDF. If I scroll down, you can see, you know, my sea creature, have you got your pictures? Show them to the camera. Clearly there's, there's instructions we've not been through yet. But you get the idea, right? Listen to your teacher. Put your hand up if you know what animal it is. It is. Now, you can see here, you know, classic sort of early language learning technique that we're hiding some of the objects which are on the screen. These are all sea creatures. You can guess what they are. So I could be doing this live. So you could say, for example, um, someone could uh, put their hand up, raise their hand on the on the Zoom screen, and I could say, right, um, Bob, can you please tell me what the middle picture is? Or they could say, oh, I think the top right is um, a jellyfish, or whatever it might be. Or you could do that within the chat as well if you don't want them to uh, appear on, the, uh, uh, on, the, on their webcam. So if we go further down, this is the reveal bit. After the hide bit, we've now got the real reveal bit. And as you can see, these are all sort of classic sea creatures. So with that in mind, we're now going to go back to my presentation which I'm now gonna present again. And I'm gonna show you how we, how we can use um, whiteboard.fi in the context of this British Council resource. So if I click here, right, you can see this, what it, this is um, what the web page looks like, whiteboard.fi. I love how simple this is, this is incredible. So I'm gonna click on new class, okay? I'm gonna put in my name like this, okay? And I'm going to click create new class like that. And here we've now got a link, right? So if I copy that and I put it in the chat for you like that, and I'm going to do this live as well on my iPad. So I'm going to go, oh, I'm going to go to the same link. So all you need is the code whiteboard.fi forward slash and then the code is y for y okay and to make it nice and simple for everybody what i want you to do please is i want you to draw a picture of a ferocious shark okay so don't choose any other sea creatures just a ferocious shark we'll all compare our very scary ferocious sharks with each other okay Make sure you put the right code in, uh, Aliyah. It's whiteboard.fi forward slash 
y for y. So let me put that in the, in the so it's y for y. There we are. Uh, or you can put in the whole link, which is here. So all you need to do is click join class and then you'll be able to uh, start drawing. Now, uh, the way it normally works, ah, ah, wow, is that supposed to be a ferocious, <laughs> a ferocious shark? It's a heart. It's a heart, Ariana. Uh, it is a bit, a bit like Jamboard, but with Jamboard, just to be very clear, the way this works is you um, are seeing your picture on your own screen with uh, this one. But then if I'm sharing my screen as the teacher, you can then see um, all the everyone's picture all in one place. Whereas with Jamboard, you can see everyone's uh, drawings on your uh, tablet or your computer. The nice thing also about Jamboard is you can have multiple slides. So you could, for example, add uh, groups of say four students to one slide and then get them to then collaborate together and draw together. Because if you have 30 students all trying to draw on the same slide, it'll be, it'll become very chaotic, I think. Um, uh, yeah, so Stefan, you'll be, um, I'll be sharing the presentation link with you at the end of the presentation. I've already shared it with you already, actually, the short URL, but you'll, you'll get everything at the end. Um, so I would love you to draw me some pictures now, everybody. At the moment, oh, we've got some sharks appearing. Oh, that's a very ferocious shark, Jerome. Well done. That's, that's quite a cute little goldfish, isn't it, Jessa? No, it's, it's a, sort of, obviously it looks a very, um, very ferocious shark. So I'll just give you a bit more time. Clearly, if we have hundreds of people all trying to draw together, it might slow it down a little bit. But, um, but there we are. So the class code again is Y for Y. There we are. And uh, to submit it, you just, uh, you draw your picture. Let me do, let me do a, a shark myself. Hang on. And then I'll go through exactly what you need to do. So there we are. My shark's not very good, actually. Never, never mind. Oh, that's a terrible shark, actually. Never mind. Uh, let me start. Let me start again. Where's my? Where's the eraser tool? There we are. Oh, let's, there we are. Let me start again. That was a terrible shark. So what I'm doing is I'm actually drawing on my iPad as well while I'm in this in the live session. So let's go for that one, that one, and it's. There we are, awful sharp, but never mind. Uh, right, so then I, uh, from there, uh, you tap. All right, actually, that'll appear on the screen, won't it? I think mine will appear on the screen, or it will have somewhere. Okay, so you logged into the whiteboard. You then have your the whiteboard canvas in front of you, and you simply draw the picture, and then it will then start to appear on the big screen. Because there are hundreds of people trying to do this at the same time, that's why it's taking a long time for that to happen. Uh, you can also write text as well, but obviously the idea of this is to draw a picture. Uh, yeah, so you can see, and again, you can see, you'll be able to see some pictures. As you can see, as I scroll down, some pictures are starting to create. When I've done this with a smaller group, um, it works absolutely fine. It's just the fact that there were lots and lots of people all trying to draw at the same time. Um, Okay, so if your pen is white, you need to then tap. Well, it shouldn't be. By default, it should be black, I think. But if you tap where it says stroke, you tap on that option. You can choose whatever color you would like. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so in a sm with a smaller group, this will work seamlessly. It's just the fact that we have a lot of people all taking part at the same time. Right, you haven't got tool to draw on my whiteboard. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you should have a toolbar with all, all the different drawing tools. Um, you don't need to submit it, Liliana. It would, should just appear automatically. So there's not, there's not a button to submit. It should just appear automatically. What I suggest you do is you have a play with this at home with a couple of devices and see how easy it is for it to work. It's just the fact that, I mean, it's great that we've got hundreds of people <laughs> taking part, but just, uh, yeah, you don't need to submit it. It does it automatically. Yeah. So the idea of this to me for a language teacher is um, you're then going to be interactive, a bit like with Mentimeter, but with drawings, you're then going to be reacting and saying, oh, that's an interesting picture, Bob. Um, tell me a bit more about your ferocious uh, shark. Um, yeah, so the idea is for you to draw a ferocious shark. Yeah. That's what I've asked you to do. 
right you don't need to submit it it does it does it automatically okay um okay let's see i can see a few questions have come up in the q a let's have a quick look so um right is wakelet similar to daigo yes it is a bit similar but daigo i don't know if, even know if daigo still exists but wakelet is is very nice and gives you lots of possibilities right uh wakelet for teaching purposes okay so using wakelet for teaching purposes great for promoting independent uh, study so for example you could collect a whole set of links around a certain topic for say uh, advanced learners um, and then give them that one link uh, so that you're not asking them just to go out and find resources for themselves you're giving them uh, links that you found for them um, or you could create a collection that they contribute to as well um, and then base your uh, activities around those links so it could be a YouTube clip whereby you turn that into a list of comprehension whatever you want to do essentially uh, right okay I think those are all the questions so far uh, got 13 new messages. Okay, so I, I can see that some of the pictures are turning up, not some, some of them aren't. So I will just refresh the page, see if that makes a difference. Ah, there we are. That's better, isn't it? Wow, that's very ferocious there. Gee, geez. Okay, there we are. That's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, so I can start to see all your ferocious sharks. Great, uh, great stuff, everyone. Okay, now there isn't uh, the option to print. Oh, sorry, to, to, to save all the, um, the pictures all in one go. So a little trick that I would suggest is if you do a search for, in fact, let me just show you. It's called um, Cute PDF Writer. Cute PDF Writer. Here we are. And this is completely free. It's this one, free download there, Cute PDF Writer. I've already installed this. So it means that if I go to here, and I click, I'm in Chrome at the moment. If I click on the three dots, let me just refresh the page again, just see if there's any other pictures that are going to come up. Okay. So if I click on the three dots and I click print, uh, I'm not going to choose my Epson printer. I'm going to choose Cute PDF Writer. It also says save as PDF, which I think is the default option in Chrome. If you click Cute PDF Writer, I can now print. Let me just do that again. I can now print what's on the screen. Ah, oh, there we are. Can you see it says print now at the bottom? I can click print and what, will that, what that will do is it will generate a PDF of all the pictures which should in a moment appear in uh, as a download. I'm not sure what's, what's happened to that, but it, that's probably, it's probably on my desktop actually, but I'm not gonna show, my, show you my desktop right now because it's very untidy, but that's, that definitely works. I've done that many times before. So that's how you make a PDF print off of your, of your whiteboard. So there we are. So that's a, that's a, a, a way in which you can use a white, whiteboard.fi to promote speaking practice around a, a resource on the British Council website. So hopefully, I'm sorry you can't all see all your pictures, but if we had fewer people in the room, it will be fine. Let's just have a quick scroll through. Look at these ferocious sharks, aren't they scary? Absolutely fabulous. Yeah, so that's it. And completely for free. And if you wanted to close the room at any moment, all you'd have to do is you click on the cog. As I says, it automatically closes after two hours. But if you click on the cog, you can see I could hide names, I can clear all whiteboards, and I can close the room. So I don't think, let's have a look. No, I could, I could do it. Okay, so I can click on an individual picture and I could erase that individual picture or delete that individual picture. So if someone were to post something inappropriate, I could, um, uh, I could tap on it and I could delete that for you. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's um, carry on as time is ticking on. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Right, okay, now, uh, Jack, you just know Seesaw, and yes, it is similar to Google Classroom and Padlet and all the rest of it, but it does things which um, are very cool as well. Uh, I don't know if you can retrieve a deleted one, I'm not sure, but it's, it's only supposed to be something quick and easy. It's not supposed to be something that's permanently there for um, whiteboard.fi, so I'm not sure. You'd have to have a play with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you Seesaw. So Seesaw is a bit like Facebook, but it's designed to be used in education. Um, a lot of teachers are using it at the moment in a remote teaching context. Uh, so essentially you have like a feed like you do with Facebook, you post things to that feed, 
you can add classes, you can set it up so it works on one-to-one -one devices or on shared devices. They've um, published some uh, home codes as well so that um, you can give those out to the students. It's um, private. You can have a public blog if you want to. Um, it's really, really nice. Uh, it's popular at primary and at secondary school level. If you just do a search for Seesaw, you'll find more information. There's Seesaw ambassadors that you can connect with on Twitter. There's a Seesaw Facebook group. Um, and the thing that I particularly like is um, the new Chrome extension, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. And uh, let's see where it is. Yeah, right. Okay. So I thought I would bring up this page here, which as you can see, uh, yeah, it is a bit like Edmodo. Okay. So just check it out. Have a look at it right now. But this thing that I'm going to show you right now is not like Edmodo. Right. So this is a lovely picture of um, the ITEL. Uh, 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 I'm not sure if it's the committee or it's an event or what have you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here, which is post to seesaw, which is a Chrome extension, right? If I click on this right now, it says capture visible area or capture selected area. So I'm going to click uh, capture selected area. I'm now going to drag across the screen. Like, oh, hang on, that didn't. That wasn't right. Let me go do that again. Hang on. Uh, let's do that again. Right. So I think I left. I think the mouse was not behaving as it should have done. Right. Let me do that one more time. So, oh, it's hang on. Let me delete that. It's because my mouse keeps. Let me let me focus and concentrate. Right. So, let's just delete that. Let's, uh, right. We'll go back. Oh, right. I'm using a wireless mouse and it's not behaving. Right, here we go, let's do it again. Right, so post the seesaw, capture selected area. So in other words, any picture or any text that you have on the day, okay, we'll, we'll just leave it like that. You can imagine um, for some reason it's slipping at the moment. Right, so if I click, um, could not be recovered. Okay, let's give it, oh, okay, that, there we are. That's, that's the picture. So what I've done is I've selected, uh, it is a bit tired, the mouse, I think. Um, I've selected a part of a web page, which could be a picture, could be some text. And here I've got the microphone option. Okay. So if I click on the microphone, I'm going to start recording not right now. Here we go. Okay. So I'm recording right now. And you can see top right of the screen is um, the, the, the timer is going up. I'm now going to click on the, uh, I'm going to use this one, I think, this pen tool, and I'm just going to highlight someone here, someone here, and someone here. And I could give a description of that person or those people. I could um, take a Google map and I could add that into Seesaw and I could then uh, annotate over the top of the Google map. Maybe if I'm teaching um, a lesson around, say, directions, saying, right, to go to the post office, go straight on, turn right, and uh, go over the roundabout. Or if I, in this situation, uh, this could be a family scene, and I could be describing my family, for example. So I'm going to press um, pause now. I could now click uh, here if I wanted to. And I could click again, I could click erase drawing. So if I do that, what happens is it gets rid of all the annotations. I can then carry on. Um, I could press um, the record button again because it's paused at the moment and I could do some more annotations. So you, you get the idea. Seesaw essentially, or this particular part of Seesaw is you can either draw with a blank background uh, if you wanted to create a screencast for explaining a grammar point or what have you, or this, I could um, take an image, which I could upload from my... Uh, my device, but what I like about the Seesaw Chrome extension is the way that you can just grab something from a page and put it straight into Seesaw and everything that you record, everything that you capture is all recorded. So in other words, your voice, the annotations and the picture as well. So if I now click done like this and I can listen back to it, if I click play. Okay, so I'm recording right now and you can see top right of the screen is um, the, the, the timer is going up. I'm now going to click on the, uh, I'm going to use this one, I think, this pen tool. And I'm just going to highlight someone here, someone here, and someone here. And I could give a description of that person or those people. 
I could um, take a Google map and I could add that into Seesaw and I could then uh, annotate over the top of the Google map. Maybe if I'm teaching um, a lesson around, say, directions, saying, right, to go to the post office, go straight on, turn right, and uh, go over the roundabout. Or if I, in this situation, uh, this could be a family scene and I could be describing my family, for example. So I'm going to press um, there we are. pause okay, now. I saw that someone asked in the chat, can you download this video? Yes, you can. Now, if I click on the little uh, tick there, um, because I've only got one person in my class, which is the demo class, um, I'm just going to add it to myself. But what you'd have normally here is you'd have a list of names. So you then either assign what you've done to the whole class or to individuals. Okay. So if I now upload that, now here it is, and you can see that underneath that um, video is a comment option. So if I click comment, I could write, for example, great job, oh, Joe, or great job, and click post. Right, so that's a text comment, but also you have the possibility of click, clicking comment, and you've got a little microphone there. So I can leave an audio comment, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So I click, uh, click the button to begin recording, well done, Joe. Fantastic job there describing those three people in that picture. Isn't Seesaw a fantastic tool for publishing multimedia in a private space, which is also moderated, and how to live, leave uh, written or audio feedback? Right, so that's now processing. Uh, I can listen back to it. Well done, Joe. Fantastic okay, job there it. describing those and you can see that that's now appeared there. So by default, the teacher can leave comments on all the students' work, um, but the teacher has to enable the option if the teacher wants uh, students to give comments to each other, okay? At no point can a student send a private comment to another student. Everything is moderated, and the teacher can set it up so that the students only see their own work, not everyone else's work as well. Here, if you click on Get Home Learning Codes, that will also give you the option to, um, uh, uh, so the students only get to see their, their, their own work in this uh, current situation, uh, which is uh, parents are asking for from Seesaw and that's why that was done. If I now click save, you click on the three dots um, here. If I click save, then what will happen is it creates what's called a uh, WBM file. But I think I'm right in saying that if you do it on the, um, Android or the iOS version, it will make an um, MP4 file, which you may prefer. So you can download the video, but with a WEBM file, you might have to convert it as well. Um, yeah, so in relation to GDPR, if you do a search for GDPR for Seesaw, then you'll find uh, that they have um, a privacy policy around that. So all these tools that I'm showing, I always recommend that you always do a search for GDPR plus the name of the tool, but certainly when I've done that in the past, there is a GDPR policy for Seesaw. So um, it goes without saying, I wouldn't show any of these things unless that was the case. Brilliant. So hopefully that's given you a little introduction to Seesaw. Um, so I could, for example, if I just click the plus icon here, post student work, I could just do a drawing straight away. I could record a video. I could take a photo. I could upload something. But I particularly like that Chrome extension because of what, uh, how, e how easy it is to use and how it can be used in that way. Right, so let's carry on. Ah, oh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Right, I'm just gonna show you how this works now. This is Quizzes, which is similar to Kahoot. And uh, I'm gonna click Play Live. And uh, I'm gonna click Continue. And right, so Quizzes is a bit like Kahoot. What I'd like you to do now, please, is go to joinmyquiz.com, which is what I'm gonna do no, I won't do it on my, on my device. I'll just wait for you to, to, to do that. So go to joinmyquiz.com and put in the code 557683. So I'll put that in the chat for you. 557683. Okay. And it's uh, joinmyquiz.com. So in this particular, there we are, in this particular um, exercise, I've created some audio comprehension uh, questions for you because you can record up to 10 seconds of audio per question. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do uh, some listening comprehension for
for you right now. I think it's four or five questions I've done for you. So in a moment, I'll click start. But why not uh, either do this live or you can set it as a homework as well. So you could do it asynchronously. Those people were asking about that earlier. So I just uh, wait a, a minute or two before we got a few more people in the room. Uh, I did look this up about the maximum number of people you can have in a quizzes quiz, and it's 500. <laughs> so uh, let's see if that's, um, let's see if we reach that right now. They're all popping in very quickly right now, but that's all good. On the left-hand side, I can see how many people are joining. At the moment, it's 170 or 181, 83, lots of people. So I just wait for a moment while, um, while uh, you all join. Feel free to ask me any more questions. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Quizzes is totally cool. Yeah. Just in the chat, has anyone played around with recording audio for quizzes yet? Be interesting to know. Okay, I'll just give you another minute or so, or a few more seconds, as time is ticking. And then we'll start. What are the other share options? Um, so there's homework, it's homework and live. Um, just, yeah, just, just, I think those are the main ones. There's also the teleport feature, which means you can take a quiz, for, a quiz question from somewhere else and put it into your quiz. Right, we're gonna, we're gonna make a start if that's okay. So I'm just gonna click start. Thanks every, every, everyone uh, for joining. Yeah, so you can have up to 500. At the moment it's 270 or so. The limit is 500. Okay, I'll wait another 10 seconds because I'm a nice person. And then we, we are going to start. Okay. We ready? <laughs> are we ready? <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's go for it. Right, so it's five, I think it's five questions, four or five questions. Right, so I click start. <laughs> And it's really important, this is a really important tip to mute the audio um, top right. Otherwise, you're going to have too much audio playing while you're listening. So you've got all these different questions. You have to listen to them. I hope it's going to work. You'll be able to listen to them. Um, some are around capitals. Some of them are specific questions around English grammar. But you get the idea, hopefully, of how you can use this in your own class, whichever language you teach. This is so cool. <laughs> look at the look at the uh, leaderboard go. Brilliant. So, uh, Diane, you should be you should be able to click the play button. Is there a play button on your screen? So, if you you don't see what don't you see, Vance? Do you not see a play button? Have you? I've clicked start, so you should, the first question. Okay, well, the, the question should have appeared on your screen. I think everyone else is, seems to be coping all right already. Oh, says, so, right, do you mean Vance, it won't play? Oh, that's interesting. Ah, oh, okay, because you're, you have to disable Zoom audio. Okay, so in a, okay. Okay, I presume everyone that is, is competing can hear the audio. I'm not sure why. Yeah, so maybe with fewer people, it would be absolutely fine. This is the first time I've ever done this with so many people. In fact, it's the first time I've ever demonstrated this live ever. So it's interesting to see how that, how that works. You can't, so some of them, okay, you can't see the, so if I click on questions, so these are the questions that should be coming up. Yeah, so let's listen to the first one. What is the capital of Indonesia? Okay, that's question one. You've got four options. Let's. Click on question two. Which of the following words are synonyms for the word beautiful? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Next one. What is the past participle of the verb to go? Okay, so here you have to write in the correct answer. So you've got a range of exercise types, which is very nice. Teachers need support when using new technologies to enhance teaching and learning. Okay. Yeah, so there is um, number two. Um, I chose the multiple answers option. So there is more than one possible answer. 
just to make it a bit more interesting so there's not just one right answer so you might want to to use that what do you think about the idea of recording audio questions in quizzes for listening comprehension in a remote learning context cool so yeah that's right michelle so um the it seems that the order of that came that they came up in mind will be different from yours um, that's why i didn't um have i didn't write um for say question four i didn't write question four because of the fact that it put them in a different order. Yes, you are limited to 10 seconds, but you can do quite a lot in 10 seconds for sort of short, short and snappy questions, okay? And they are hosting all the audio for free. Okay, I appreciate that it didn't work with everyone, but um, it worked with quite a few of you, and if you use it with a smaller group, it should be fine. Uh, yeah, so I prepared all the questions in advance, absolutely. I'm not sure if you can copy copy across someone else's questions. You'd have to have a look at if that works in the teleport feature. So I'm going to stop now, if that's all right. So if I click end game. Is it, right, end game, right. So now it says, are you sure you want to end the game? Yes, I do. Oh, oh my mouse has been very silly today. Right, okay, hang on. There we are. So, oh, hang on. There we are. Right, I should be able to move that. There we are. End game. Right. I think it's because of the band. It's probably a bandwidth thing as well. Hang on. Oh. Ah. <laughs> What's happening to my mouse? Just give me a second. There we are. End game. We right. There we are. Right. So now we can see that Naeem came top of the tree. Well done, Naeem. That's awesome. And then we could play again. You can also go into uh, export the results as an Excel spreadsheet, but you get the idea. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right. So we're going to come out of this and go back to my presentation, which uh, is. Um, Hang on, let's come out, oh, exit, that would help them, exit. Right, and then close that. Uh, why has it gone full screen? Uh, hang on, what have I done? Let's close that. Uh, hang on, just give me a sec, I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second and then just go back to Chrome. Ah, there we are. That's it. There we are. Right. Okay. Right. So uh, share my screen again. And there we are. Right. Share. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you ever so much. That was lovely. Right. So let's carry on. Right. So creative. Oh. Um, let's, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's do this. Right, Socrative, right. So what I'd, oh, what I'd like you to do, please, is I would like you, oh, hang on. I'd like you to go to Socrative.com and sign in as a student for me, please. So Socrative.com and sign in as a student. So uh, S-O-C-R-E-T-I-V-E, Socrative.com, like that, and then click Login. And I want you to click on the student login, not the teacher one, the student one. Okay, so Socrative.com. Let me put the link in the chat for you. Like that. If it comes up. Oop. Oh, my mouse has been very silly at the moment. Hang on. Right. There we are. Right. So chat. Or oh, could someone put that in the chat for me, please? I'm just going to click teacher login. I'm just going to log in myself. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to click uh, on quiz. And yes. And I'm going to choose one called everything beneath the sea, which is based on the same unit that I showed you a moment ago. And I'm going to make it teacher paste and I'm going to click start. 
So what I'd like you to do, please, is when it says room number, you need to go to 29701 for me, please, 29701. And having done that, it should then bring up the first question, which is how many sea creatures are mentioned in the text? So when this comes up, what I want you to do for me, please, is I want you to tap on the picture and then just read the text quickly. Um, and the reason I want you to do that is because clearly if in a um, remote learning context, you're going to have the issue of students using Google Translate if you give them any sort of reading comprehension. And so a way of getting around this is if you were to use um, the teacher paste option of a quiz. So you just launch the quiz, you choose the teacher paste option, and then all you have to do is tap on the picture, answer the question, which in this case is how many sea creatures are mentioned in the text. So I've made it multiple choice. So you just click on the, uh, the one that you think is the correct answer. And I can see that 55 or so people have answered. So I'll just let you answer. Once you've all answered, once you have all answered, or a few of you have answered, I can then click next to go on to the next uh, page. Now, clearly uh, here, we've got a lot of people who are doing this live with a small group. You could say, have a couple of minutes for the, um, uh, for them to answer each question. And then on the next question, I've also added the text as an image because you can add an image for each question. Um, it will hopefully not give them enough time in order to use Google Translate because of the fact that the text is an image. Um, it's, just, it's just a suggestion for um, formative assessment opportunities. Um, I suppose they could use the, the camera in Google Translate, the app, and which uses the functionality that used to be in what was called Word Lens, and then maybe the text will appear over the top, but they, they'd have to be pretty canny to do that. So uh, there we are. So you've all answered, well done. Um, I'm now gonna click the next option. That will now take us on to question two. So you can see they can only see one question at a time, which is really nice. I've just used the same picture there. So in other words, they've got to read the question, they've got to read the text and then answer it. So that shouldn't, that should mean that it should avoid or reduce the number of people who are using um, uh, uh, Google Translate to try and translate the, uh, the text first. And then you don't get a true representation of their language skill if that is the case. Cool. So there are fewer people, ah, oh, okay. The, the numbers are going up now who are answering it, which is lovely. But you get, you get the idea. I think because we haven't got lots of time left, I'm just gonna click finish now, but hopefully you've, you've seen the point I'm trying to make here. So I click finish and say, okay. I can immediately see here the results. I wouldn't show this to the students, but I could if I wanted to. Yeah, can you see? And then I can click here and I can see who has got them right and who's got them wrong and then work, work it out from there. I can also click on reports. I can download an Excel spreadsheet with all the answers there. But again, you wouldn't show that to the students. You just use that for your own uh, information. Right, thanks ever so much. We're just gonna finish off now with Shalala, which is this one. Uh, if I click present, I'd like you to go to shalala.com for me, please. Shalala.com. And I'm just going to show you this live. So let me uh, come out of here. Shalala.com. Like that. So I'll put that in the chat. Unless someone else could do that, it would be lovely. Uh, I seem to have lost the chat for some reason. Uh, so, okay, could someone put that in the chat? Shalala.com. I'm going to click on Draw Room and I'm going to click Start Draw Room. Okay, and click Conversational. And I'm going to get rid of the music, otherwise, it becomes overbearing. So, this is Conversational uh, mode. Can you go to shalala.com forward slash draw? And can you put in the code? And once some people start appearing on the screen, I will click start. Lovely, okay, so I'll just give you a moment to log in. 
So you, the students do not need to have an account to do this. They just need to go to the link and put the code in and then we're good to go. So again, I'm just going to give you a couple of moments to do this because we don't need to have lots of people. In fact, I think we're going to just, I'm just going to click start, I think, because we are running out of time now. So I just click start. And as you can see, it says, listen to your teacher for a drawing prompt. So I would like you to draw me a picture representing how you are feeling right now around remote teaching. So if you could draw a picture on your screen, then you click submit and then submit again, and then all the pictures will start to appear. So I'm going to do this right now. Shalala dot com like that forward slash draw don't forget this is being recorded as well so you can go through the steps again so i go to that's right um hang on that's interesting it's not giving me the option let's try that one more time right it seems not to be working for some reason i don't know why that is ah here it is right room code right so it comes up with room code i put the room code in it might again because there are lots of people accessing right now three f y m b ah it says this draw room is locked well i <laughs> created the draw why is it be okay oh the enter name right okay then join room, right, start draw. then you tap start drawing, and then I'm gonna draw a heart like this, tap submit, and then submit again. And what should happen in a moment, if it works, is that picture should appear on the screen. So the idea of this, Shalala is absolutely brilliant, it's similar to whiteboard.fi. Um, but there's a few more things you can do with it. Um, you can get the students to draw a picture based on their what you've asked them to draw. And yeah, it doesn't seem to be working properly at the moment. Let me just refresh the page. And then that, that picture should then appear on the screen, which it's not doing. Maybe there's a bandwidth issue at the moment, which is why everything's sort of slowing down a bit. Um, I'm not sure. I can see my masterpiece on my screen, on my iPad screen, but it's not appearing on the screen here. And I don't know why that is. Let's refresh the page. What should happen is we should be seeing some pictures appearing. Ah, there we are. Whew. Oh, that's good. Cool. So thank you ever so much. That's lovely. So for example, if I click on um, the little a yellow circle there, which is the masterpiece option, it then adds it. So Nuri has been added to the masterpiece uh, board. I can put in, uh, if my mouse is gonna come back, come on mouse, there we are. I'm gonna put Vance's in. I can see that Vance is not, uh, sorry, Chandra even. Chandra is not feeling very happy about online teaching. You get the idea. So I can download any of these images by clicking on the download option. Wow, that's cool, that's really cool. And I can also, um, delete any of them and I can add them to my masterpiece board. So if I now click end drawing and click end room um, and click PDF here, I can download all of these as a PDF. Can you see? Download storyboard. So if I click download storyboard, it will then allow me to download the ones which I've particularly highlighted. Um, so you, again, for evidence, that's fine. Then you can use that for a future. Uh, activity. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's great. So, uh, and if you want to create your own account, just go to shalala.com forward slash draw. I'm just going to, for some reason, when I click chat, it's not actually, let me just stop sharing for a second. Ah, here we are. So it's shalala.com forward slash Joe. If you want to use that link, you can use that as a way of uh, creating your own uh, your own account on Shalala. Right, so let's go back, share screen, present, there we are, right. Right, so 
Um, just to finish off with, I wanted to highlight um, some webinars that we're doing in the UK uh, that the Association for Language Learning is organizing. And um, uh, I've been helping and hosting some of these as well. You can get the links at the bottom there. You can sign up to any of them. They normally take place between eight and nine o'clock in the evening in the UK. But if you click on the YouTube link underneath, you can watch all the past recordings uh, as well. So that's something which uh, is free professional development for you. And this is the link to this presentation. So I'll just give you a moment to uh, note that. And I'm more than happy for the next few minutes and longer if need be to take any questions so far. I'm apologies for the, uh, the mouse issues that I had, but I think it's been pretty smooth. It's not been too bad at all. And um, I'm just gonna press exit on here. You still will be able to see the, there we are. You can still see the link and then I'll be able to access the the chat hopefully a bit more easily or maybe not chat seems to be dis anyway right so i'll just give you a moment to um to uh note that down and i can in fact let me put the i know what i'll do is let me just put that in the chat for you if i stop sharing right now that's going to be easier isn't it and then i can just put it straight into the chat there you go so that's the link to the presentation and I know, according to the, the clock officially, we've got three minutes, but I'm more than happy to stay on for another 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever is required, because we, um, yeah, we covered a lot of content, but I'm, I'm hoping that all the content that we've covered, you uh, have got a good idea on how you can try some of this in your classroom. And if you need to watch the recording, then you feel free to watch it back and feel free to contact me via email or Twitter for anything that you're not sure about. And if you would like me to do a, a webinar for you in your own country with similar content, let me know and I would love to hear from you. So over to Benita for any questions that, that um, uh, people want to ask right now. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Joe. It was a very inspiring uh, presentation. There are so many tools that you introduced to us. And I saw in the notes in the chat that there are still some of us saying that we need longer time with you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to invite me back. You have to invite me back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so be prepared for that. Uh, okay. Um, we ran out of time, but I think we. Uh, I still want to open Q and A session. But I'm going mm -hmm. to share the exit. Uh, the feedback form first, uh, so that Perfect. those who yeah. want to leave the yeah those who want to leave the webinar can fill out the feedback form. And uh, meanwhile, you can also answer some questions. Let me share the feedback first. Okay, hopefully everybody can see my slides. So please kindly drop your feedback in this link. Uh, and then if you want to check for the recorded version or the materials from Joe presentations, uh, we are going to post it in our website. Just visit our website. Okay, then I'll go ahead and get back to the questions. Some of uh, the participants asked about whiteboard.py. They were asking mm -hmm. about whether or not they can uh, show the control which input, uh, which students can input, um, can, can show the input on the screen. Is it possible to control um, and show the... You, sorry, so, so can you ask the question again, please? So I wasn't quite clear. Yeah. Uh, is there any control to show which students input we want to show? So probably yeah, so controlling you, yeah, yeah, so what you do is you, you click on the individual whiteboard and then it will then go full screen or it'll go large. If that's, if that's, so the teacher can do that. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. I think enlarging uh, certain students' uh, answers. Yeah, so if the teacher clicks on the picture they want to highlight, it will go larger. They'll be able to see it um, full screen on the screen. Yeah, as I, do you remember mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. was showing how you could erase a picture I clicked on the picture and it went full screen and it gave me the option to erase it or delete it. So it would work in the same way. If you wanted to highlight mm -hmm. uh, a particular picture, you would click on it and it would go full screen on the, on the screen. Yeah. All right. And since you uh, demonstrated using this video conference, is it possible for teachers to use it individually without using Zoom or other video conference? Um, so, right. So do you mean, can, can, can teachers use Zoom independently? Is that what you mean? Or? Uh, no, uh, whiteboard, uh, whiteboard.fi without using Zoom. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. So in, yeah, as long as you have some, some way of giving the students a link, 
um, you could do it. Uh, yeah, you could give them the link in um, Google Classroom. You don't have to show them the screen, but it's what I like about it is the way in which you can share your screen within Zoom, and therefore everyone can see all their all the different pictures appearing. Because otherwise, they only get to see their own pictures on their own screen. Um, they wouldn't be able to see all the pictures appearing that you can see as the teacher. So to me, the most important thing in a way um, is to be able to show that, uh, show your screen so, you, so the students can see all the different pictures of all the different participants all appearing in real time. All right. Uh, and one more thing, is it possible for students to draw collaboratively within one screen? Uh, not with that tool, but you could with Google Jamboard. So if you want to look at Google Jamboard, um, you certainly can draw collaboratively in the same screen, but not in this one. The, so it depends on what you're trying to achieve pedagogically. Um, I've just put that in the chat. Google Jamboard um, allows you to create a collaborative space. But what I would recommend, as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, is that let's say you've got 30 students that you assign uh, a number of students per slide because if you have 30 students all taking part in the same slide it will become chaotic I would imagine so if you say right this group is working on slide one this group is working on slide two this group is working on slide three etc etc and then you would then get them to then draw all together and they can add pictures and text and all the rest of it yeah all right now move on to uh, what's it menti.com since in menti we cannot see uh, the student's id or name is there any alternative to menti.com in which teachers can see who posted the answers uh, that's a great question uh, off the top of my head there's one called woo clap woo clap which you could have a look at i'm not sure if that is anonymous as well but that's a similar tool to mentimeter um, you can mm -hmm. use, I know, in Google Slides, uh, in Google Slides, there is the option for uh, what's called Q&A. Um, and if the students are all logged in to their Google account, then they can't post anonymously. You have to, um, or if they're all in the same domain, you, you can see who has, uh, uh, who has uh, posted. So that would be a way of having a Q&A whereby it's clear mm -hmm. who has done what. Um, yeah. there's, there, there are other, there are other, there's also one called um, yoteachapp.com whereby they have to put a nickname in or a name in and you can insist they put their actual name in. That also allows you to mm -hmm. draw as well yoteachapp.com, which is also very nice. Okay, that sounds a great alternative. I, Fantastic. Uh, um, okay, another thing. I think uh, we need suggestions for this. Uh, how could we know that a certain app needs good internet connection or not? So how do we evaluate whether or not it's a, it needs a high bandwidth, low bandwidth? Is there any way to evaluate that? Well, I, I, I would just suggest have a, have a play. Obviously, anything involving video will require more bandwidth, but everyone's context is different. And it might be in certain parts of Indonesia, for example, that, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a lower bandwidth is, is the norm. So you need to factor that in. So for example, the text-based um, tools should be fine with a lower bandwidth, but if you wanted to use, uh, I don't know if quizzes, for example, with the audio would work in uh, if you have less bandwidth, or certainly something like Flipgrid, whereby you're recording videos, you're uploading videos, that possibly wouldn't work in a low bandwidth uh, environment. But I would just, with all these things, I can't possibly know about what your internet connection is like in, in your own context. You just need to have a play with it and work out what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I think my one more question for you about Charala. Uh, yeah, okay. Is it possible to, to keep the, the artwork there for indefinite amount of time or it will be deleted like uh, the one in whiteboard.fi? So it's the idea of Shalala, it's only going to be there for as long as you have the session active. If you want to download mm -hmm evidence of what they produced you can do it in the way that i demonstrated using the masterpiece board and 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 uh um printing that off as a, or, or exporting that as a pdf but these tools i mean yeah the the, the these tools are designed to be used or certainly the whiteboard.fi and shalala is designed to be used quick and easily with um in the case of shalala uh, without the students needing any registration in fact like with whiteboard.fi nobody needs registration with that so 
if you want to have something that's permanently you know there normally you need to have an account and all the rest of it and there are advantages and disadvantages of that with shala la if you print off what you've done as a pdf you can you can save it to google drive if you wanted to so you've got a permanent record of it so it, it depends what you're trying to achieve if it's just like a quick and easy way of doing drawing to convey meaning as an alternative to text they're brilliant for that if you want to make um, a permanent record of what they've done you can do what i've suggested e.g save as pdf in whiteboard.fi using either the save as pdf option in chrome or using the uh, cute pdf writer option likewise with shalala you can add images to a masterpiece board and then and then export that as a pdf Okay, thank you very much for uh, the answers. I think That's okay. uh, we have got lots of tools here. Yeah? Today we have Mentimeter, Padlet, Wakelet, Whiteboard.fi, Quizzes, Socrative, Sarala, and what we need to do is play around with the tools and don't use it one at all at the time <laughs> together. So thank you so much, Joe. Uh, no thank you so much for to have uh, fill out the feedback form, we really need that. And I think I will hand over to Com or Pak Jati. Do you want to say something to close this session? Hi, Fanita, and um, I'll say something. And um, hello, everybody. I think obviously I'm not a technical expert. I think at the beginning of today's webinar, you could hear my voice, but you couldn't see me because I forgot to turn on my video. So uh, I've done that now. <laughs> Um, that's why we've invited Fanita and, and Joe, uh, more of the sort of the digital English language experts to do these webinars. Um, I just really wanted to, to thank Joe again for being with us uh, this morning in the UK. Uh, for us in the afternoon, it's just, I can hear the mosque uh, next to my house here in Jakarta. So it's, it's prayer time for, for many people at the moment. So. Thank you for your patience um, in staying for this session. We have recorded it. Um, I saw a couple of questions in the chat about feedback forms. Uh, we will try to email an English version of that for people from other countries um, so that you can give us some feedback in English. But basically, uh, I wanted to say you know, thanks to all of you. We know whether you're in the UK or whether you're in Indonesia, these are very, very challenging times, difficult times to be a teacher, to try to continue the education of your students whilst you're at home and they're at home. Um, we've had a great session today on synchronous activity uh, with Joe and making online learning more interactive and more fun. Uh, tomorrow, there's another se session here uh, on Thursday, um, I'm very pleased to be able to tell you that we're inviting our friend uh, Christiana from Romania, who you briefly met if you were in Joe's first webinar. So Christiana is coming back and she's going to give us a talk about uh, the role that parents can play in supporting education from home and how teachers and parents can work together to make sure that the, uh, the learning continues in an efficient and effective way. And then finally, from the, well, for, well, not finally for this series, but another session that I'll just announce briefly is on Friday morning uh, at 10 o'clock, we will have a British Council uh, expert from South America called Graham Stanley. And Graham is gonna be talking to us about uh, remote teaching and especially some tips for you about using Zoom and engaging with your audience and remembering to turn your camera on. Uh, not like me. All right. So thanks, Joe. Thanks, Fanita. And thanks, everybody, uh, for, for being with us today. And I'll hand back to Fanita. Okay. Thank you, Colm. So just a reminder that tomorrow we'll have Maneni from ITEL. Uh, she will give a presentation on evaluating online materials. I believe that it will be very interesting too. So tomorrow we'll be back again uh, at 4 p.m. Indonesia time. And if you haven't got your ticket, please visit our website. Thank you very much. And I think that's all for today. See you tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kom, Pajati, and Maria. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye.